welcome back to Paytology. Today, I thought I would show you two ways to utilize digital rewards in your online classroom. Let's go. I do want to start off by saying if you are new to VIP Kid or new to teaching or especially new to online teaching kind of platform, I would totally recommend sticking to physical props. This can be things like plastic food, flashcards, use these things just because until you get the hang of it, the digital reward system can be a little bit more challenging until you drive with it. I just recommend sticking with physical rewards. I also recommend sticking to these physical props and rewards. If you are teaching a lot of the lower level students, I would say levels three and under, um, or if you're teaching a lot of trial students that are brand new to the platform, sometimes parents of the younger kids don't like the digital props. And a lot of the times if they don't, they will let you know kindly. Um, or you can kind of get a feel for it by how they're acting when you're in the classroom. But just stick to the non-digital rewards for these types of students. They're getting so much stimuli anyway, just from how the world is today. And using a physical prop on a digital screen is still just as enticing to the child. The first way to utilize the world of digital rewards is so simple and that is by just creating them on your own. This may seem a little daunting if you don't know what you're doing, but I will walk you through it in a second. When I started out, I had no idea that digital rewards were even a thing and I had no one to kind of guide me how to get into the groups of the pre-curated ones and so I am here to help you guys through both of those. But first thing that we're going to talk about is these self uh, created digital rewards. There are endless benefits to creating your own digital rewards, but I think one of the most important ones to think about is that you don't have to sift through a bunch of content looking for a reward that your student would like. You can just curate it yourself and create it in a matter of minutes. Um, so say your student has a very different interest or something that's not as common like, you know, soccer, basketball, say they like, I don't know, something a little, a little off the beaten path, you can just go find pictures of it and make your own reward. So let's say you wanted to create a reward for younger boys. So you could make a Mickey Mouse reward or for older boys, you could do Marvel, Spider-Man, that kind of thing. They love that kind of stuff. Um, or say you're going to make one for a younger girl, you could do Minnie Mouse or My Little Pony or whatever it may be. My only side note and warning on this topic is to really be cautious of the Chinese culture. If you're going to make a reward for something, obviously make sure that it's appropriate and not only appropriate in America. There are things that we think are cute and normal for kids like shows like Peppa Pig um, that are not allowed in uh, the Chinese culture. And this shifts and changes with the wind, but just do your research so that you cover your own tail on this kind of thing. But that is a whole other thing that we are not gonna get into. Feel free to look that up on your own. Moving on. Another great thing about creating your own digital reward is that you know exactly how many clicks it takes to use them, how they're going to function. And lastly, you can start today. You don't have to wait to create your own content. Whereas if you want to use other people's content, you have to um, request to use the content and you have to provide your teacher name and a lot of other information. So there's pros and cons to both, but I think they are both very useful to have on, to have on hand. So here I will show you exactly how you can create your own digital rewards using a simple tool like Google Drive and Google Slides. Here we go. All right, so the first thing you want to do is to pull up your Google Drive, sign into that and hit new. And we're going to create a new Google Slides. So we're only going to be working on one slide um, and that will be the entire reward, which makes it simple and it makes it for a faster loading time when getting ready for your classes, which helps a lot. If you've ever been stuck in a classroom waiting for your reward to load, it's a little awkward sometimes. So we avoid that by just making one slide with animations. So first I'm gonna close this themes tab because we don't need that. And then I'm going to click and delete these text boxes. 
So we're gonna be working on the background. So first you'll want to dream up some themes that you can um, turn these rewards into. So for this demonstration, I'm going to create a donut reward where when the student does a good job, every time um, I will give them a different donut. So I usually like to alternate stars in the reward. So I like to have about five uh, rewards, so clickable rewards throughout the class. So in order to have a donut reward, I wanna go on Google and find a plate background. You wanna try to make sure that the image is free to use. Like a lot of these are products. So you don't wanna use those because you might have to pay to download them. Uh, so this one, you wanna click on it and then we want to um, right click or double click if you're on a Mac and copy the image address. So not just the image, we want the entire image address. Then we come here back to our Google, Google Drive and click background. Then from image, we go to choose image by URL and we paste. So that's our image, make sure it looks good. Um, if you have an issue with your URL, it will not load the image correctly, so you might have to find a different one. So then we insert the image. Voila, there it is. And remember, you will probably be showing this on your phone, and so the quality doesn't have to be, you know, 100%. This will look very good when compressed on your digital device. So there's our background image that's done. So now we go back to Google. So we go to Donut. PNG, that will help us to only find images with some sort of transparent background. So we hit images, and my best tip I have for this is after typing in exactly what you want, so donut PNG, you know, dinosaurs PNG, whatever it may be, go to tools, color, and then transparent. And that will only include images that have some sort of transparent element within the photo which helps to eliminate a lot of searching and clicking for you. So this one looks good for our first one. So we will click on the image once and then copy the image this time. So not the image address, just the image. Go back to our presentation and then control V or command V to paste. So then you'll want to put this wherever on the screen that you would like it in whatever um, angle, you know, however you would like it to look on your plate. I'll probably want mine about there. And then I repeat this process. Um, so I have somewhere around five donuts. So, so far we're having pretty good luck with these. Occasionally the donuts will come up with a background on them still, and you will not be able to use those because we, we do need that transparent background. So this is a example of what you cannot use because this white background will not go away. So I delete that image. Somehow it still got through our two filters um, and that happens sometimes. So just move on. So then uh, what we're going to do next is a very important part. Click on one image at a time and then right click and hit animate. So you can click how you want the image to come in. So I want this one to fly in from the left. On click. So I, you always want it on click when you're doing a digital reward because that puts the power kind of at your fingertips for when the reward comes in. And I don't want any transitions. So next I would like this center white one to come in. So I right click, hit animate, and this one, you know, I will have come in from the top. Then I will click this chocolate one to come next.
So then let's hit play and preview how this will look for our students. So this is what they will be looking at when you say, today when you do a good job, you will get donuts. So then when you give them their first reward, you simply click on your screen and there's the first donut. And then when they do a, a good job again, second donut, third donut, fourth, fifth, six, however many you wanna put on this plate. You can even add something that says good job here at the end, whatever you want your reward to look like. It's super easy. You can download Google Drive on your phone and simply open it from there and show them. Hold it up to your screen uh, and it's as easy as that. Let me know if you try making your own content, your own digital rewards at home and let me know what you created. Did you do stars? Did you do animals in the forest? What, what did you do? The options are endless, which makes this part so fun. So let's move on to option two. The second option, instead of creating your own digital reward content, is to use this content that has already been created by experts. I use a source that's actually through an app um, that is created by VIP Kid Teachers. Um, that are just amazing and phenomenal at creating these types of um, resources for other teachers. And the best part is that it's free. The worst part, if there is a worst part, the only really con to this is that you have to request to have access to the app through a Facebook group. And I will walk you through that here. So in order to start using the VIP Kid Google Slides app, you will have to join the Google Slides group on Facebook in order to be approved for the app. The easiest way to do this is just to type in VIP Kid Google Slides group in your Facebook search bar um, and then request to become a member of the group. You will be let in once someone can verify your profile. You'll have to answer some questions about, you know, what's your teacher name on the VIP Kid app. How long have you been teaching? I think things like that, how you plan to use their slides. So just about their group, in order to be approved into the group, you have to know where the resources and tutorials are located. So they do have you take a little quiz um, as well, just so you know how to navigate the Facebook group and you're not going to be messaging them with 9,000 questions. Um, and there is a different group if you're not a VIP kid teacher, but you teach for someone else, you can still join this other group as well. So when using this app, there is a whole slew of content that you could dig through for hours and hours on end, literally hours, probably days, honestly. And um, I always recommend tipping them because it is a completely free service to use once, once you are approved into this group to utilize their app. Um, but I will show you a couple examples of the ones that I use that I go to quite frequently. And then this is just an example of kind of how they work. A lot of click by number, so your students have some more interaction with them as well. If you do use a digital reward, I always recommend in your feedback to other teachers to write, I write in brackets, what reward you use. So that if you have this student as a regular, you can remember, oh, last time we built a pizza. So we're not gonna do that this time. This time we're going to build Elsa's castle, whatever it may be. <laughs> Did you go boy? So as you can see, the process for applying for this Facebook group and then getting approved, it could take a little while, especially because there's only a handful of these curators and one of them has to be available to let you in the group. But once you're in, you're in for life. And as long as you utilize their content appropriately, you can have it forever. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. And otherwise, I would love to see what you create. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.